how to start becoming who we want to be. Whether it's a good leader or better at taking care of ourselves or both, it usually involves taking action in ways that are different from most people around us, sometimes everyone around us. And that can be uncomfortable. The uncomfortability is one of the great hindrances for people stepping up and becoming the person that they truly want to be, for leading the life they truly want to lead. Because they need to start taking actions and making choices that are different from so many people around them, even their friends, even family. And this is just a hurdle we have to get over. It's a learning point. It's a growth opportunity. Because in order for you to be all that you can be, all that you want to be, you're going to have to be different than most people. And so many people don't take that step forward because they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to make enemies They don't want to be an outcast. But what if I told you, you can be different and still be loved and still be liked and still feel good among the people that you've always been with, even if you're not being the same person that you used to be. In fact, you can be even more admired and appreciated because of your ability to be yourself and also acknowledge their abilities to be themselves. And even though being different creates waves, sometimes you can make those waves little ripples instead of giant tsunamis. It takes intentional action. That means thinking about the effect you want to have on the people you're working with or dealing with at the time and intentionally going that direction. If you have the intent to keep things smooth, to keep relationships, to do good, to make things better, you can have that effect. It takes a little thought and it takes a little practice in doing it. And I'm going to give you some support and some guidance in doing that this episode. This is Lucy Gable, integrative leadership coach, author, speaker, and professor at the George Washington University School of Medicine grad program. And this is Leadership, Life, Health, and Happiness. My last episode, I talked about how being a good leader is like being an athlete. And I often talk about how good leadership overlaps with taking care of yourself. I had a few conversations this week with people about that topic, which were my motivation to make this episode, how to start becoming who we want to be, whether it's a good leader or better at taking care of ourselves or both. It usually involves taking action in ways that are different from most people around us, sometimes everyone around us. So what do we do about that uncomfortable feeling we have when we want to start making choices and taking actions that are unconventional, that are outside the norm of what most people around you are thinking and doing? Of course, you can just get out there and give it a try, just take a stab at it and see what'll happen. At the same time, you can start to create some skills around it. Know that the information I'm giving you here is from my own experience and experience working with others. And even though this practice will fit into a lot of situations, because I don't know what your exact situation is at this time, to make this work, no doubt you'll probably need to finesse it into your specific needs and situation at the time. So this is when you know you are being or doing something differently than what you think everyone else around you is comfortable with. This is really about you becoming 
more comfortable with being that person, but at the same time, helping others to be relaxed and comfortable with it too. So at this time, I've narrowed it down to three steps, which you might want to write down. And the steps are, first, name the situation. Like, I'm going to do this thing here. Second, frame the situation. And when I say frame, what I mean is talk about it and explain it in terms of your own personal reasons. And if it's appropriate, add in what's in it for them as well. And I'll share more details in a minute. But when you talk about it, you want to say something personal and positive. And if you share something about how it's going to affect them, you also want to make it positive. So name it and frame it. Now I'll give some examples. I'm going to talk a little bit about making changes regarding your health that are different from the norm and then some that are leadership related. You'll see how the techniques are very similar for both situations. And the more you practice with this, the easier it becomes and you just do this really naturally. It's great because you'll avoid miscommunication and misunderstandings and you'll keep things moving along just fine. So first, let's talk about simple health choices that we're making that are going to be different from people around us. Now, health is, of course, different than leadership, because with your own health, it's a personal thing. And you get to decide how you want to take care of yourself. As long as it's not hurting other people or insulting them, everything should be okay. But even still, I have many clients that confide in me that when they're doing something different from their group or their friends or their family, they sometimes feel self-conscious or they feel like they might be imposing something on people or making them feel uncomfortable. Name it and frame it. So here's an example. Let's say you feel uncomfortable about the fact that you're going out to lunch with the same friends as you always do, but you're choosing salads instead of burgers, or you're bringing your lunch instead of going out for fast food. And you feel a little uncomfortable about that, or you feel like you might be making them feel weird. So naming it would be something like simply saying, I'm eating more salad for lunch. You don't mind if I bring it with us and eat it there, do you? That was personal and positive, and it named the situation ever so gently, that this is what you're doing. And that in itself helps everyone to relax about it. I even threw in a question there, you don't mind, do you? And that gives people a chance to say, no, of course we don't. Of course they're going to say that, if they're your friends, if they're your family. You can add something a little more personal, maybe even lighten it up with something positive or funny. If you see them looking at your salad, like, hmm, what's that? With some curiosity, you might say, it's actually a bit of a weird combination, but I'm loving it. Generally speaking, though, you want to make sure you're saying these things from the heart. It's all about you and you're not underhandedly trying to encourage them to change like you. Because you are recognizing this is your decision and it has nothing to do with them. Here's another one. Let's say you're staying at a friend's house for the holidays and you want to make sure you get your exercise in in the morning. First, I want to tell you that if you're staying for a day or two, you can skip a workout once in a while and enjoy time with friends or family without losing ground. But if you're staying for several days and you want to keep your routine, I want to honestly tell you, I find people don't mind having a little space to themselves when they have visitors, especially when it's for several days. So let's go along with the example. Name it. You could say something like, I'm thinking about going for a workout a couple mornings this week. Then add something personal and positive. I just feel so much better 
when I get some movement in the day. And it, it really helps me to take these holidays in stride. Now you can leave it at that, or you can add something about them that's also positive. You could say, feel free to wake up and do whatever you do in the morning. I'll just come back and make my own breakfast and shower and we can catch up together around lunchtime. That takes away their stress of like, okay, what time are you going to be back? Do I need to be around? You know, how is this going to look? So you explain it. You can also add something positive in there. That's what's in it for them. Like you can say, if you want, I can bring home some coffee or I'll bring home some breakfast or something that makes it even better for them on their side. It takes the pressure off you and them. Now let's take this and change it just a bit into a similar scenario of being a leader. You can do this if you are making changes that stem from your own desire, or if you're a middle manager following directives from your own leadership. So remember, we're going to name whatever's happening and then frame it. Give a little bit about you, something that's positive and personal. And also when you're a leader, always talk about what's in it for them and make it positive as well. Now we're not making things up. We're not putting a smiley face sticker on something this bad. We're bringing out the things that are positive and true about the situation. And I want to put something else in here before I get started with the leadership piece. As a good leader, it's not only about your decisions. It's never only about you. It's about everyone on your team making a collaborative effort. So as a good leader does, before you made your decision, you've ideally spoken to everyone separately about this and you know where everyone stands on your decision and you've asked them for their opinions on how to make it better or do it best. So by the time you speak with a group, you've taken everyone's opinions into account and you're sharing the decision that you're making based on all the information that you've gathered. And you do this even if decisions have come down from someone else. Here's one scenario. So naming it could be something like, we're all operating on a limited budget right now, and I've spoken with everyone about where you'd like our limited funds to go and what you need. I heard all of your requests, and I have them all written down. And since customers are really appreciating our spa treatments lately, we're going to put the money into the spa equipment first. And then the next time we'll invest into the next most important priority, according to the group. That's naming it. That's telling people what's going on and refreshing their memory that you've spoken to all of them and you've taken their interest into account. Next, frame it. Something positive, ideally, and personal about yourself and something positive in terms of what's in it for them. So you might say, I want you to know I have the same desires as you. I wanna make this place as great as possible as soon as possible. I know we have a lot of improvements to make and I wanna make your jobs easier. Remember, we're all in this together and we're gonna keep moving forward strongly and with persistence. Notice how also the way that it was framed was that it's not about you trying to push someone to feel differently about something. It's more about you holding the responsibility of making the decision and also taking them into account. And while you're doing this, whether it's personal situation or in a leadership situation, you always want to observe the reactions of the people that you're talking to because that'll put you at ease. You can feel out whether they are just fine with what's going on or if they seem like they're uncomfortable still with what you're talking about. If it's obvious that they aren't liking the news that you're giving or the information you're telling them, you've got to name that as well. If you're in a leadership situation, 
You can do that in a private meeting afterwards, or you can do it at the meeting with the group. But if you're with a group, you want to be respectful about how they feel. So they don't feel like you're embarrassing them or calling them out in front of people. So you can say something in a group like, Lewis, what are your thoughts about this? If you're in a private meeting, you can say, Anne, it looked like you were having some concerns at the meeting today. Is there anything you can share with me about that? There are so many ways to sense people's reactions and ways to respond to people's reactions, but that gets a little more detailed and that's where I typically help people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm working behind the scenes on a group program for leadership, so you don't have to feel alone and feel like you're trailblazing all by yourself. There's great power in having a group of people with like minds to support you. If this intrigues you, let me know. Or you could head over to lucygable.com forward slash leadership program and fill out the assessment of where you are and where you want to be. And I'll contact you to help you take your very next step in what you're working on in this moment as a leader and possibly feeling a little bit alone on it. How did you feel about this episode? Do you have any questions or any requests for further examples or conversation about this topic? Write them in the comments or send me an email. Want to hear more about this topic? Click like or give it five stars and send it to someone if you know they'll like it too. This is Lucy Gable. I'll talk to you next time.